Hey, Ukraine Media family, Sergey Praknevsky here, and welcome back to Daily Tips. Today, we're going to do tip number 62. But before we go there, I want to quickly remind you that this year, I'll be presenting six sessions at Adobe Max. You can see them right here. And if you are not going, you should definitely come. And if you are going, you should definitely sign up. I'll have the link at the bottom of this video. So definitely find me. I'd love to hang out with you guys. But in the meantime, let's dive right into our tip number 62. All right, so in this video, we're going to keep talking about the time property, but this time we're going to take it up a notch. We're going to talk about how to offset the time property. So I'm going to go into this ukramedia.com text, and then I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch of the source text property. And in here, I'm going to type time. So we've gone over that before, so you know what that does, the current time indicator right here, and then the origin is zero. Now, sometimes you want the origin to be somewhere else on the timeline. How would you offset that? In other words, I want zero right here, the origin to be, let's say, at two second mark. How can I make that happen? Pretty simple. All you have to do, just go to this time and go to the end of this time property and then say subtract two. So now what happens, the current time is two and then you subtract two and then you end up at zero. So now when I click away, you can see we're, we're starting at zero and then we're counting up. Pretty simple. The same thing applies for anything else like four second mark. Just say subtract four and then you're starting at zero, at four. Okay, pretty simple. Now, sometimes, obviously, you can do it in here, but this value is fixed. You have to, in other words, to change it, you have to always go into the expression and change it. And sometimes you want to keyframe that value. So we're going to use a slider. So I'm going to go over here and type slider. And then I'm going to select it and drag it and drop it right on top of my Ukraine Media text. And let's just label this uh, current, or let's do time offset. Let's do time offset. Okay, and then I'm going to highlight this four and then pick whip to that slider. So now whatever we type in here, that's what's gonna offset the time by. So when I click away right now, it's zero. So it's starting at zero. If I go to two second mark, and if I change that to two, you can see it's starting at zero at two and the same thing for four and so on. So you get the idea, that's how you offset the time. Now. The same thing is true also with whatever you have in your timeline. So if you have something living in your timeline, like keyframes, endpoints, markers, then you can use that to offset the time. So let's let's start with the endpoint. So right now we have this layer, and this layer has an endpoint. And the location of this endpoint can be the origin as well. So for example, I'm going to put it, let's do three second mark right here. So I want for this time to be zero at this three second mark. So I'm going to say time subtract, I'm going to highlight this path, and then I'm going to say subtract, and I'm going to pick whip to this layer. And then I want a property called in point. So now when I click away, you can see that at in point, it gives us the value zero. So it's going to start at zero, and it's going to start counting up. So it doesn't matter where I put this in point, it's always going to be zero there. Pretty cool. The same thing applies for keyframes. So let's do the same thing. I'm going to highlight this path and then pick whip to this opacity property. And this opac opacity property has a keyframe right here, just the only keyframe. So I'm going to refer to it by using a method called key. And inside of my parentheses there, I'm going to say index number one, because we only have one keyframe. So that's the only one. So obviously now we have a keyframe and we have to be more specific. What do we want from that keyframe? I want a property called time. So now when I click away, Wherever this keyframe is at, that's where zero is going to be. So if I drag it over here, it's going to start from there and it's going to start counting up. Or the same thing there, right? So that's pretty neat. The same thing for layer marker. So I'm going to select this path and then pick whip to this layer again. And then I'm going to say, I want marker, period, key. In other words, which marker do I want? I only have one marker in here, so I'm just going to say marker one. And then I'm going to say I want a property from that marker called time. In other words, I want the location of that marker on, on the timeline. So now when I click away, you can see that wherever this layer marker is at, that's where zero is going to be. Okay, if I move it over here, that's where zero is going to be. Now the same idea applies for this composition marker. So I'm going to select this path. And this time I'm going to say this comp, so this composition that we're in, we want a marker and then a key. So we have to be specific which marker we want. There's only one marker, so I'm going to say index one. And then now we want, what do we want from that marker? Because that marker has many properties. So we want time property. And now you can see wherever the marker is at, that's where the origin of our time is going to be. So if I move it in here, 
it's going to start from there. Now, one thing you probably will notice is that if we go to the right, it increases. However, if you cross the zero and you go to the left, you can see that it still moves and it goes into the negatives. And sometimes you want that, but most of the time you probably don't. You want it to be zero all the way up to that marker and then start counting up. So how do we fix that? And to fix that, we're going to use if else statement. So I'm going to take this path right here and I'm going to put it into a variable. You can make up whatever variable you want. I'm just going to use a simple letter A. I'm going to say A, you're going to be this path right here. So when I refer to A, I'm going to refer to this path right here. And honestly, when I was first learning expressions, that's the, I guess, one thing that was tripping me up, the variables. Some people are so good at coming up with like legit sounding variables and they sounded like a method to me and I would look them up online. I'm like, where do I find this? Uh, whatever. And I thought it was like a method that existed somewhere, but it was just made up. So again, variables are totally made up. Make sure you know that because trust me, that, that tripped me up for, for a long time. All right, so now that I have this path in this variable, I'm going to use if else statement, I'm going to say if, I'm going to say if this, the value of A, if this path is less than zero, okay, so when it's less than zero, when it's negatives in here, I want it to be, basically, I want to be zero, nothing else, just zero. And let's extend this. But if it's bigger than zero, right, if, if the opposite is true, I'm going to say else, let it be A. That's it. That's simple. So now I'm going to click away. When it's zero, you can see that not much is going on. It's staying zero. But as soon as it crosses this marker right here, you can see it starts counting up. All right, so now let me show you a practical example of this. So we're going to start fresh again. I'm going to go to this Euchre Media logo, and I'm going to go to this rotation property. I'm going to Alt-click on a stopwatch to create an expression. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to go from the source text property. I'm going to pick whip to this rotation property. So we can visually see, right? and hear what's going on in this rotation property. Okay, whatever I type in here, you'll see it visually there. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a property called time, okay? So now we have the current time, right, applied to this rotation property. So as you can see, it's a very small number, but obviously it's rotating our rotation property. However, it's very, very small. So a lot of times you see people doing this. They say usually time times and some amount. I'm going to say 100. So time times 100. So now it's going to move much faster. Okay. And so next what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to create a variable. So instead of time, I'm just going to say a. Again, totally made up variable. I'm going to define it at the top here. So I'm going to tell it what a is. I'm going to say a, you're going to be time. That's all. So it's the same thing we had earlier. Just, just looks a lot better. So now what we're going to say, we're going to subtract certain things from that time. So now we can say subtract uh, certain, like in other words, start at two second mark. So I'm going to say start at, I'm going to say minus, let's do two. Okay. So now it's going to start at two, right? It's animating at two. However, if we go before that, it's animating, right? That's what I meant. Sometimes you want it to be zero. You don't want to have any kind of movement. You want it to start animating right when it hits that mark or whatever mark you set. So now we're going to do the if else statement. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, all right, if A is less than zero, in other words, if it's less than zero, if it's in negatives, I want it to be zero. And if it's the opposite, like if the opposite is true, if it's bigger than zero, I'm going to say else be that. And it's that simple. So now it's zero and I think I defined it two. So let's do something we've done before. Let's point to this layer marker. So I'm going to say, let's pick whip to this layer. And then I'm going to say period marker, period key. And then key number one, that's the only key we have. And then we're going to say time property. So now it's going to be zero. And then as soon as we cross this layer marker, it's going to pick up. All right, well, I think this is going to be the end of this daily tip. I really hope you found it useful. If you liked it, definitely hit like. And if you want to share the video, I'm not going to stop you. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media. And if you want to learn more about expressions in After Effects, if you want to be more intentional about where you want to go with that, if you want to learn about the basics and things of that nature, you should definitely consider taking our online course 
at ukramedia.com slash expressions. And we also have an amazing community full of a lot of creatives from all over the world. And you can join that Facebook community at ukramedia.com slash community. I hope to see you there. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com. <laughs>